Hi dear friends, I know what you're thinking and what you're probably saying. This is a, a vlog that is coming to you so soon after the other vlog was sent to you for St. Patrick's Day of prayer and fasting. And I just want to say what an amazing day it was of prayer and fasting when, I mean, so many of God's people got together to pray and to fast and to seek God's face. Now to really seek God's face to answer prayer according to his plans and to his purposes. But we laid hold upon God. We pleaded with God, not just for those of us that have been struggling physically in our bodies with illness, but those that are struggling mentally, those that are struggling spiritually. But ultimately, we also prayed for those of you that have been watching these vlogs and those of you that have been brought up in the gospel, know the gospel back to front, outside in, upside down, you know it every way. And yet you're still not saved. You still don't know Jesus Christ. And on St. Patrick's Day, we sought God for you. That you might come into a living, a living and powerful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus Christ still today as you watch this vlog, then let me tell you, the scripture reminds you, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, Mark Taylor, this little guy standing in front of you is simply asking you, pleading with you, surrender your life to Christ. He is altogether lovely. He is a saviour and a friend that sticks closer than any brother. And so I thank you, those of you that joined on St. Patrick's Day. There were so, so many. We have messages from everywhere. Africa, Scotland, Donegal, Bangor, Monaghan. Look, we got name lists everywhere where people were praying and seeking God's face. Just for God to come and move in power. So I'm just joining you this morning. It's a little earlier because I want to come before you. And the title of this little vlog, you might have seen it at the start. And it was given to me by my dear friend who we love, him and his dear wife. Oh, they have journeyed with us right through this whole experience. Pastor Roy Kerr from Cancer Care and Focus on the Family. It's an amazing, amazing ministry. And they pray and they journey with so many people that are going through cancer. And this little title was given to me this morning on the phone by my dear brother Roy. And it's simply this, my story, God's glory. Because I got great news this morning. I want to read to you. I want to read to you a wee verse. And it's Psalm 115. And it's verse 1. I'm reading it in the Amplified Version because it gives it some depth and meaning. Not to us, O Lord. Not to us, but to your name. Give glory. For your mercy and loving kindness. And for the sake of your truth and faithfulness not to us oh lord not to us we stand here in our garden this morning heather dylan and luke are just there and, and it's amazing we've just had the most amazing morning and we want to share it with you and we want to tell you as a family as the taylor family our god still reigns our god still reigns our God is still powerful. Our God is still all-knowing. Our God is still trustworthy. We got up this morning quite early. A powerful day of prayer and fasting yesterday. We were so encouraged and blessed. We got up this morning and I'm speaking tomorrow night to a group of men that are seeking God in a shed in Malacca. A group of men that prayed with me and for me and, and a group of men that I've only met and already there's a kindred spirit and i i stood at the sink with heather this morning doing the breakfast dishes it was 10 a.m exactly and heather come over and she threw her arms around me and she said darling we've had no word yet we normally get word from the hospital or the doctors quite early in the morning she says we've no word yet 
it's going to be another day of waiting. And those of you that wait on results of scans, you know what that's like. Those of you that have been in cancer centers or cancer hospitals and you wait, that waiting game is worse than anything. And I sat down and I opened my Bible just to read and start to prepare for tomorrow night and to still my heart before God. And a message came through on my phone and it was the results of my scan on Friday. And it came through at about 10.45, 10.46, just over that period of time, a couple of messages. And the message was this, there is no reoccurrence or no metatasis of the cancer. There's nothing to be seen. And folks, I can't describe to you how our family felt this morning as we read the words that there's no spread of the cancer. The exact words were no reoccurrence. And folks, it's an answer to prayer. And we stand before you today and we give God all the glory, every ounce of it, because he has answered the prayers of so many of God's people. He has answered the prayers of a wee family here in this wee house outside Stranokum. And I just come before you today to thank you folks that have journeyed with us, that have been with us, that have prayed with us, that have blessed us, that have continued to pour into our lives. Because I'm telling you this, without your support and your love and your, your continual kindness to us, you have carried us along. But ultimately we have to come and although we say thank you to you, we come humbly and say unto you, O Lord, unto you, O Lord, we give you the glory. Because the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are truly glad. And I am thrilled to come today after receiving this news to tell you that we serve an almighty all powerful, all knowing God. And I'm pleading with you, folks, please, if you don't know Jesus Christ, can you today fall on your knees before Almighty God and repent of your sin and turn to Christ, the one that went to Calvary and took your sin and your sorrow. He made it his very own. He bore your burden to Calvary and he suffered and he died there alone. That is why scripture says Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. Isn't that amazing? It wasn't because we were his friends. We were enemies and Jesus Christ still went to the cross to die for you and me. And so... This video is short and sweet, but I want it to circulate far and wide. I want you to take this verse. Let me read it to you again. Come on. Grab your Bible. Grab your phone. Grab your Kindle. Grab your highlighter. Psalm 115, verse 1. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name. Give glory for your mercy and loving kindness and for the sake of your truth and faithfulness you see folks have i've learned this over the past four years especially the past four years when god spoke to me four years ago and i shared this with you i don't mind repeating it four years ago god spoke to me things going on in my life that were sinful deceitful and wrong and god sent this verse to me as clear as i'm talking to you now set your house in order for you shall die the verse says and not live and I looked that passage of scripture up, and of course it was Isaiah 38, the story of Hezekiah and how he was dying and he was faced with death and he put his face toward the wall and he cried unto the Lord and he besought the Lord and the Lord heard his prayer and the Lord gave him another 15 years. Four years ago, the Lord told me to set my house in order. And I know there's still some folk watching in these wee videos and, 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 and you can think what you like. Alan Bartley said a powerful thing a couple of Friday nights ago in the barn. He said a powerful, powerful statement and I've jotted it down and I love it and I refer to it. And he said that some people think I'm worse than I actually am. Some people think I am better than I actually am. But God knows 
who I really am. Now, that's not Alan's. It was him that quoted that. I, I can't just remember it. Maybe it was Tozer. It could have been Tozer, but it was Alan said it. And I love it. Folks, God knows me inside out. And he knows you inside out. And the Bible says, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And I want to ask you, as I conclude this celebration of praise and glory to Almighty God, are you his? Does the Lord know you as his? And you know me by now. I have never asked you once, are you a prod, Catholic, Jew, Hindu, Baha'i? I don't care what you are or where you hang your cap. Presbyterian, Methodist, Gospel Hall, Baptist. Listen, Ricky Bell, my dear friend, one time we shared a mission together in Balamina and he said to the folk, do you know what? I can't be bothered with denom dom denominational tags. I can hardly get that out. I must have hellers teeth in the day. He says, I can hardly be bothered with denominational tags because he says, when the Lord comes and we fly up, they'll fall off. But he says, if you don't know Jesus Christ and you go down, they'll burn off. Get rid of your denominational tag. Get rid of your sectarianism today. Get rid of your bigotry today. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And sinners includes you and me. But thank God, I took him at his word. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord might be, could be, possibly will be. No, 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 no. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I give unto my sheep eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. Do you get it? You see, the Bible says the moment you come to Christ, you're in Christ. And that's wonderful. But John 10 says that the moment you come to Christ, you're not only in Christ, you're in the Father's hand. And boy, the Father God has got a grip that will never loosen and never let go. And he will hold on to you because you when you come to know Jesus or his prized possession, you are his child and you belong to him. So join with us today as we celebrate the news of no reoccurrence, no sign. God is good and he is good all the time. Now let me take a little minute as I close. I know some of you are still praying for others and so are we. And you're still praying for folk that are still waiting on news and folk that are still facing chemo, radio, radiotherapy, immunotherapy, loads of stuff. We're still with you and we still will be with you and we still will journey with you and we still will pray to our God and never let go. Never let go. Because we love you. Christ loves you. The Father loves you. And the Father longs to have a relationship with you folks god bless you sure far and wide if you haven't hit subscribe yet please remember it's look if you don't want that's okay but if you do there's going to be some amazing stories coming up and the first one that i'm going to share the first one is my dear friend who i love dearly we reuben wall some of you'll know him some of you'll not know him he's only a He's only a young guy, but he loves Jesus. And I said to him about a year, year and a half ago, that him and I will share a mission together. And we will. And Reuben and I are going to meet, God willing, tomorrow morning, which is Friday, but the video will go out next week. But we're meeting tomorrow morning, Friday the 19th. We're going to record together. And Reuben's going to share what Jesus means to him in his life. And it'll be powerful. So that's the first of many stories that are coming. There's so many folk lined up to share with me. So hit subscribe. We want to get the gospel out. We want to get the glory given to God out. And we want to give God his rightful place. Because he is still on the throne. No matter who's in Stormont. No matter who's in Westminster. No matter about Bill Gates or whoever else is doing stuff behind the scenes. God is still on the throne. And God is is a God who cannot lie. Thank you, folks. Oh, thrill today. Thrill today. Bless you in Jesus' name. This song coming up, please listen to it. This is our dearest friend, sang at Heather and I's wedding, still in our lives many years later. We love her. We cherish her and her family, David, and the kids. 
Angela is going to sing. I was nearly going to say Angela Bell. Forgive me, David. It's Angela Carlton now. My dear friend from Monaghan Elam. Angela, I didn't ask her to pick a song. I don't know what it is. But Angela's going to sing right now and give glory to our God. Listen to the song. Share this wee video. Rejoice. But here's the big thing. We would rather be rejoicing today to hear the news of you. You. Coming to know Jesus. We would have a bit of a party down here. But it would be nothing compared to the party that the angels would have. Over one soul. One sinner that comes to repentance. Is that going to be you today? You're going to be the one that's going to cause a party in heaven. It could be. It could be. And let me say this. It should be you. You have heard this message of the gospel long enough. It is time to seek the Lord. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.